All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today's lesson is about building credit. Now, this one is probably one of the more important uh, lessons that you will need to know as an adult because credit, believe it or not, it's everything nowadays. You know, you need to have a good credit score to get things. And as you will see in this lesson, okay, so we're going to be talking about little tips and things like that and how it works you know uh there's guys this is one of those lessons that i could go on all day about easily because there's so much but i'm basically condensing it down because again i know there's a lot of students who are just going to be just like switching off and i don't care about this things like that when really you should so again i don't try to make it too too much you know, but I have basically brought brought it down to condensed it down to what you truly need to know. OK, and these things do work and it will help you in the future. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with your warm up. So here's your warm up picture. The question I'm asking you is this. What do you think this artist is trying to say about the people in debt? Now, if you notice, you don't see any people, right? And you see the dirt flying out of the hole. Look what the hole represents. Look what they're saying. And look what else is takes over most of the picture. Okay. So what do you think this artist is trying to say? You know, about the people in debt. Okay. So use your analyzing skills. Go over this picture. Break it down. Okay. Now pause the video because we're moving on in three two, one. So what is credit? Credit by definition, is basically a contractual agreement where the people borrow money and agree to prepay the lender, usually with interest. And that usually should be taken out. It's always with interest. Okay. Now you really, really break it down even more in simpler terms. It's a promise and a trust between you and the lender. So someone who's going to lend you money that you will pay them back plus a little extra. Okay. Now, thing is, I know a lot of people who go, oh, man, I don't want to pay extra. I'd rather pay for myself. Okay. I get that. I really, really do. Nobody wants to pay more for something than they have to. No one wants to pay more for this little controller than they have to, you know. But, excuse me, the uh, thing is. When it comes to credit, you have to, okay? That's the key thing, guys. And this is something you'll see me talk about, you know, a little bit later too. You know, when you pay these lenders, these banks, things like that, when you pay them a little bit more in that interest, yeah, that's going to build up your credit. And that's what they want, you know? So in a sense, you are kind of paying to have the ability to borrow later. You know, yeah, you're kind of paying into it. But this will help you out later on. Now, some people see it as a scam, things like that. It, you know, sure, I could see your point of view. I get it. You know, but the thing is, this is something you truly need. Unless you're a millionaire, billionaire person, yeah, you're going to need this. Okay? Now, I know some, I've had some students in the past, so I'm, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be. Well, are you now? No. So, listen up. Okay? Until you are, you need to do these things, okay? Because you saying you will be, you might not. And that's what I'm banking on, not to dis, you know, disrupt your dreams and some of that, but I'm doing it as just in case you don't. I don't want you shooting yourselves in the foot because that's what happens to a lot of people. They think, oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm going to be here. I don't have to worry about this stuff. Yeah, you do, because you're not there yet. Until you get there, you need to listen to this stuff. Okay? Now, what happens is this. You will build a line of credit. And the more you pay back and on time, the more in, you'll be allowed to borrow later in the future. Okay? Um, here's a big one. A big one that I've had a former student basically tell me. And they're like... Mr. Martinez, how come my credit score is not 
high. It's not good. They go, I always pay my stuff on time. I always, you know, you know, pay with my card. And I'm like, wait, 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 Mijo, what do you mean you pay with your card? You know, you, you, you pay with your credit card, right? And then you, you get your statement and then you pay it off, right? Either, you know, in the mail or on, online or, you know, things like that, right? No, no, I just give them my card. Like, do you have to put a PIN number? Yeah. That's your problem. You use the debit card, not a credit card. There is a difference. Okay. <laughs> that was, sounds like you'd say a true story. You know, there is a difference between a debit card and a credit card. All right. And that's why I put this picture right there. A debit card is di tied directly to your bank account. So when you go to a grocery store and you buy something and you put your pin in, da, 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 that money goes straight from your account to the company, wherever you bought it from. Okay. Uh, and the thing is, credit card don't do that. You know, again, again, they're you're borrowing and then they're going to send you a statement saying this is how much you owe. Okay. Now, debit cards can be used where credit cards can be used. Okay. The thing is, typically when you use your debit card, you need a PIN number, okay? And it's honestly, debit cards are good. Don't get me wrong. People, some people try to knock it off saying, oh, no, they're horrible. I, I don't have a debit card. Um, they are good for daily uses to help you stay within your budget. Now, so if you remember from my last lesson, I told you guys, keep your want money in your wallet so you could see. <laughs> This is where a lot of people have problem with their debit card because they're like, oh, I have enough. I have enough. So they keep spending and spending. And they say, no, they with they've used more than they had in their account. And that's where some problems come up. So that's why I tell you guys in that last video, if you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. Because again, that helps you with managing your money. And then the next step is this with your debit card. You keep a track. Of where you're spending your money now credit card it's a line of credit we access with your card uh, purchases usually require a signature so sometimes if you see people go to dinner and they pay with their card and they just write their name boom typically they use the credit card now you pay interest if the balance is not paid in 30 days okay so you can pay basically pay straight up what you paid for uh, or what you bought if you pay within the 30 days. Uh, but after that, that's where your interest kicks in for however much it is, you know, because again, as you're going to find out, everyone's interest rates is different from one another. Okay. Now, why do you need a credit card? What, what possible reason would you need one? Well, a lot of hotels require a credit card and um, especially car rental places. So if you go on a trip to someplace and you want to, uh, use a car, you have to have a credit card. They won't take your debit card. Now, here's the thing. Some banks actually have a two-in-one card. So basically, it is a debit card and a credit card. But they're kind of about those, okay? Um, so you got to be sure what you have. It's a debit card or it's a credit card, okay? And again, only a credit card can build your credit. Debit doesn't. Okay. But again, the key thing is pay back on time. So this is another question I get quite a bit. Well, what's the point of having a good credit score? What do I get out of it? Believe it or not, a lot. <laughs> a lot. So one of the things is it lowers interest rates on credit cards and loans. So granted, when you start off, as you guys are going to be doing soon, um, if you haven't started already, your credit score should be, if you look at this chart, around 600, 620, somewhere around there, you know. Um, so your interest rates are going to be high. Okay, and that's and that's typical, guys. You know, don't think, oh, well, I'm not going to use anything because my credit score is so high. Everyone starts off that way, Okay. Some people have actually have it worse, believe it or not. And I'll get to that later on. Um, 
But yeah, you're going to start off with your interest rates being high. So that's why I say don't start getting big things like I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get this. Don't get it now because your credit, your, uh, because of your credit score, your interest rates are going to be really, really high, you know. And if any guys who have a car, you might realize your insurance, if you're paying it for yourself, it's probably pretty high. Because, again, not only are you young, you know, but you know, not only do you have, not have enough experience behind the wheel, but um, your credit score is pretty low. Because, again, you're just starting off. So all that stuff combined will have a get you a pretty high um, um, insurance rate. Okay. Now here's the thing: if your credit score gets better, you have a better chance of getting credit cards and loan approvals. And the credit cards are going to be better. You're going to get more perks to them, more points, and more this and that. Um, you know, there's like no interest rates for like eighteen months and things like that. You know, so you, you get some perks, you know, when your credit score is higher. Another really big one is you have negotiating power. Yeah. When you're getting a car loan or buying a house, uh, taking out a loan, and you're trying to fight for a better interest rate, you can use your credit score saying, look, it, I have a, a 768 credit score. That's amazing. It's a great one. So... Don't try to give me one interest rate that's like a 10%, you know, for my car loan. No, 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 no. That's way too high. You know, I should be in about the five, six possibly, but nothing higher than that. I, no, my credit score, you know, in fact, I'll probably go somewhere else. And those people will definitely be coming back at you because they know they're going to be making money. You know, they know, hey, this person has a good credit score. I got to sell them this car, you know, or I got to uh, get them to get this house because those uh, interest rates, you know, things like that. Yeah, they're going to, they're good for it, you know, so you get more power. Okay. And the other thing is um, your credit limit, it gets higher. So when you start off, you might have a credit limit about $2,000, $5,000. But as you get higher up, You'll get these uh, uh, these papers in the in the mail saying, "Oh, your loan, we can you give you a fifty thousand dollar loan." Why would I need that much money? You know, it's not that you need it; it's just a hey, just in case it's here, because your credit score is really, you know. So there you go. Uh, also, if this is from personal experience. It's an easier approval to get rental homes or apartments if you have a good credit score. You know, um, I mentioned that because um, when I was getting this apartment right here, um, my ex had a really bad credit score and they basically denied her. I told them, well, let me apply it. And I've used my credit score and they were like, you're good. Here's the paperwork and all this stuff. So, because my credit score was so good, I got the paperwork right there and then. Whereas for her, they were like, mm. you know, they kind of try to avoid her as much as possible. Because, again, they know with me, with my credit score being so good, that more likely I got it because I pay back on time. And that's what these uh, property management people and some of that, they want. Somebody who's going to pay the rent on time. You know, they don't have to worry about oh my god this and this and that happening okay uh better car insurance rate even your cell phone believe it or not too i've, I've heard some stories about this i haven't done it myself but uh i've heard that if you have turning a new phone and you do a contract that you don't have to put a security deposit you don't have to put it down if your credit score is good enough and uh same thing with this last one you're to avoid security deposit on utilities so when you get a new house, new apartment, and they say to start up your gas, your electric, you know, we need a deposit. Sometimes you can skip that if you have a good credit score. Now, those last two, I don't know. I've never personally done it, but I've heard it about it. I've read it online. So I don't know if that's 
a state thing or if that's all around. I don't know how that works. So that one's pretty interesting. Okay. So. Okay, pause the video. Now, here comes the crux of it. How to build your credit score when starting off. Honestly, guys, number one thing you can do. Buy small things with credit cards. Okay. And pay it off immediately. You know, um, you can pay it off in one payment to, but I say no more than five. So let's say you buy, um, I don't know, you buy a whole furniture set, you know, for your new place. Try to pay it off in five payments, six payments, maybe max, you know. And like if you're buying jewelry, some type of ring, uh, necklace or whatever, pay it off in two payments. You know, don't let it get too big. But again, just bam, pay it off completely. Okay. And that will build credit. Okay. Now, here's the other thing too. This is a trick that I've used and it works, especially when I was starting off. Only buy something if you have at least half the money to pay it back. So if you plan on, I'm going to buy a, a chain, make sure you have at least half the money. So when you go to the store, you pay with your uh, credit card, you get that first statement, boom, you got half the money there, you pay it right there and then, you know, and then when you, by the time the next statement comes in, you should have the other half and pay it off, boom. Or like, hey, something happens, you could maybe pay a third and the next, next statement comes, you pay another third and then the last part, then another third and there you go. Okay, but make sure you have at least half the money. No, no point of not having any money and then buying something. And then now you're struggling to figure out how to pay for that on top of everything else, you know, food and things like that, you know, so have at least half the money ready to go. Another really big one. And I have to emphasize this is never pay the minimum unless I mean, and I mean, unless you absolutely have to. Okay. Cause I know, Hey, Life happens. You know, sometimes you've got a job, things like that. Things are going well. You just bought something, you know, brand new TV with the credit card. And all of a sudden, hey, um, you lose your job. And you're trying to find another one. You're doing interviews. You're doing this and that. You're going for another interview. You know, so you're basically living off what you save and what you have, you know. So there I could say, yeah, pay the minimum. If this 30 bucks, yeah, pay the 30 bucks. You know, sometimes it might be as low as, I've seen minimum statements as low as like eight bucks. You know, somebody, they told me, oh, just pay, pay us eight bucks. Very tempting, just to go eight dollars, eight dollars, whoop, whoop. But that builds up, which you will see uh, later on in another video. Uh, but again, guys, don't make it a habit. Do not make it a habit. If you have to, do it. Okay? But you want to keep paying them something. But at the same time, you got to watch your own finances as well. So make the minimum payment if you absolutely have to, but don't make it a habit. Okay? And the other really big one I see all the time is this. Students will get a card, and then they'll pay, they'll buy something. They'll say, let's think again, was you furniture okay and then what they do is they're paying part of it off you know doing the steps and then they buy something else and then they max it guys when you get buy something pay it off first before you buy something else don't buy don't keep building up on there and then maxing your card because then you're just putting yourself in a bigger hole and then now the uh, interest rate's going to kick in and it's just going to bury you even more, you know? So don't max out your cards, okay? Pay off things at a time. You know, um, I've had a student in the past basically tell me what they did was had like two or three credit cards, you know? And then, yeah, pay one here. And then this one, they had a better interest rate. So they bought a, something more expensive on that because the interest rate was lower. Hey, awesome. That's smart. That's using the old noggin. 
Okay, so that way though they they can say this card I need to pay this much off in this much time, and this other card I have six months to pay it off without the interest. There you go. Okay. Now, how to build your credit anytime? You can pay it on time. Pay your bills on time. Yeah, you have a grace period. True. Don't don't use that as a crutch. Okay. Because, say, life happens. You might get an accident. Uh, you might be on vacation. Uh, you know, something might happen. Or you forget, oh, I need to pay that off. You know, and then you're already way past your grace period. And then here comes a double payment and interest on that. Guys, just, just pay it off on time. Okay. Put it on your phone. Put it as a reminder, whatever you have to do. Pay it on time. Um, another big misconception is this. Oh, I'll have to make one payment a month. Uh, yeah, but let's say you make some extra money. You can always make another payment to that bill and make it, you know, knock it off sooner. You know, you can do that. It is possible. You can pay. Let's say you pay at the first of the month. By the 15th, make another payment. You can do that. Okay. But again, should you put your whole check and all this stuff into it? No. No. Make make sure you're able to have your needs and things like that. You know, that your bills, your electric and, you know, you have food and your, your rent and all that stuff is paid for. But if you have extra and, you know, you know, there's nothing you really want, you know, put that money into uh, paying off that debt. You know, pay it off. Make it go faster. Okay. Another really big one, because it happens, is dispute credit errors. So sometimes, guys, believe it or not, these credit companies, they're not perfect. Hate to say it, but they're not perfect. Um, if you see any errors, you realize like, wait, wait, why, why is my number going down? Look it up, call them up, ask them what happened. What, why did my, you know, uh, credit score go down? And they tell you something like, oh, well, you took out this and that. You used your card. You missed this payment. And be like, no, 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 no. I never bought anything extra. And then you can find out what happened. Did someone use your card to buy something? Is it their fault? You know, is it there? Is there a computer error? You know, things like that. So fixing those errors, you know, because why get punished for something you didn't do or something that was out of your control or they're out of their control too? Why get punished for it? Fight it so you can bring your credit score back up. Okay. And that gives them too, like, Hey, this person really is keeping an eye on their stuff. So, you know, it's good. Another really big one, guys, is please, please, please use a secure credit card. Okay? You don't want to take out a credit card loan from Joe Schmo's tire shop down the road on Blackstone. No. No. Okay? Um, so, uh, reputable company like uh mastercard you know american express things like that things people have no of. because i know some places like target walmart you know um there's some other stores that say hey we can give you a line of credit okay yeah good great thank you but you gotta read that fine print because that's where they get you because they i mean honestly they could put on that fine print saying if you want, if you miss one payment by two days, we can force you to pay the whole the whole thing off. You know, and you can't be like, well, nobody else does that. Well, we do, and it's in the paperwork, and you signed off on it. And once you signed off on it, that's that's your you saying you've read it. So going back to those terms and agreements. Now you guys are like, oh, I don't like reading that. Oh, it's so boring. Oh, it's so long. Yeah, because that's what they're hoping that you would do, not read it. 
So when you get a line of credit from a tire shop and place like that, they might put on there. Hey, if you don't pay it on time, um, we can ask for the whole payment in one shot. If not, we can take you to collections and, you know, or take you to court, things like that. And you don't want that mess. Okay, guys. So again, a uh, uh, secured line of credit from a reputable place, place that people have heard of, you know, place that's reliable. Okay. Take out the credit card from those places. You know, yeah, it's nice to have, you know, you can get this nice shirt from this place, but it's not worth it. Okay. So secure credit card companies. Now, when it comes to credit, there's five C's and I broke it down to three because again, you guys are starting off. Okay. The first one's capacity, which means your ability to pay back the loan. So they look at, do you have a job? Things like that. How much does your job pay? You know, is it a, temp is it a temporary job? Is it a half time? Is it full time? You know, how, what's your living situation? How much, you know, does all your check go into your paying your rent? Things like that. So that's what they look at. Your ability to pay back the loan. The next one's collateral, which is your assets. Things that you have that are worth some money. So if you have a car, like you have a, I don't know, 54 Ford truck that's fully restored and things like that, that can be an asset because that car is worth a lot of money. So they might look at that. And it's basically used as a guide to repay your debt. So they look at your, let's say you have that car and it's worth, I don't know, say 25000 Let's just throw that number out there. They might say, okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll uh, we can lend you about $20,000 if you put that car down for collateral. You know, because they know that car is worth that much money. And if you don't pay back, we're going to take that car. You know, now, if you don't have anything worth of value. That's where they go, OK, well, you don't have much collateral, so we really can't let you borrow money because you have nothing worth of value. You have no cars, you have no property, you have no stocks, no bonds. So you have nothing of value, so we really can't give you much money. And the last one's character. Believe it or not, they look at how you are. Your reputation as a reliable and trustworthy person. Now, this doesn't mean just like they interview you and talk to you and things like that. No, no, no. They look at your credit pass too. Do you pay your bills on time? If you didn't at some point, why? What happened? Were you in a coma? Were you in a car wreck? Um, did uh, the company you work for go under? You know, and, uh, you know, did, what happened? They look at that stuff. You know, why did your credit score fall? If it was just because you had a good job, you had a good life, you just didn't pay it back, you were on vacation, you went to this and that, that tells them this person would rather spend money on themselves and then instead of taking care of responsibilities like paying your bills. They look at that kind of stuff, guys. And again, like I told you in a previous lesson, when you put things on the internet, it's there for everyone to see. And they could easily look you up. What are you doing with your time? What kind of person are you? What kind of person are you? And they look at this during this time when they you know, should have been paying their bills. What were they doing? You're off in Mexico. You're on a cruise. You're doing this and that. You're, you know, you know, buying this car or whatever. So what happened? They look at that kind of stuff, guys. So character plays a role when it comes to borrowing a large amount of money. Okay. Now, what companies check your credit scores? Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, Innovis, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. But the first three are the main ones that everyone knows about. Now, here's something I want to make clear to you guys, okay? Because I hear it all the time from students, and I'm like, no, no. Where do you get this information from? Well, my dad told me, or my uncle, or I heard on the internet, or on TikTok, you know, Facebook, and all this stuff. Guys, these companies are not owned by the government, okay? They are not owned by the government. The government has nothing to do with your credit line. I don't know where this idea came from in people. 
you know, but the government doesn't control it, okay? You ultimately control it. Whether it goes up or down, things like that, it's on you. You control that stuff. Whether paying it out on time and following the tricks and tips I've been giving you. Not the government, okay? So get that, please get that out of your head. If you if it's in there, if somebody has told you, or if you've seen it on TikTok and things like that, get it out. All right, so here is your final question. Of the three C's, capacity, collateral, character, which one do you think you need to work on, like right now? Or one you think in the future, and I, I, I think I need to fix that up. And tell me what's your plan. How are you going to fix that up? How are you going to build up your capacity? How are you going to build up your collateral? How are you going to improve your character? You know, so think about it. Think about it and write your response. Okay. Now, I know some of you guys are like, well, I don't need to fix any of this stuff. We could always do better in everything. There's nobody here walks on water. Even myself. I could work on one of those three things. So tell me how could you now or in the near future work on one of those three things. Okay. So once you finish this question, you're done with this lesson. So good job. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if there's more you would like to talk about it, when I come back to class, um, definitely I would love to hear what you want, questions you have and things like that. Okay. Uh, so if you're in class, be sure you finish up those uh, vocab words. Uh, if you haven't started your research, please get that started. If you have finished it, awesome. Make sure your name's on the paper. Be sure you turn it in. Okay. Uh, and uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you saw something in that research. Okay. Hopefully you saw the distinction between the what you were watching and the commercial that they were being shown. Okay, then be sure you answer those questions at the end. I think it was like three or four of them. Be sure you answer those. Okay, so you guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay.